In this video, we're going to look at how to display numbers on a seven segment display. We'll start by looking at diodes and LEDs, then consider a seven segment display, and then go on to the decoder logic that converts a binary number into lighting up segments on the seven segment display. A diode is an electronic component that acts like a valve. It lets current flow through it in one direction, but not the other. The internal resistance of a diode is very low, like a wire, so we usually put a resistor in series with it uh, to prevent overcurrent and causing the diode to burn out. A diode has two terminals to it, the plus end that's called the anode and the minus end that's called the cathode, and current always flows from the anode to the cathode. An LED, or light-emitting diode, is a special kind of diode that emits light when current flows through it. We can create a display by arranging multiple LEDs together in a pattern. There are two configurations, common cathode, where the cathodes of the LEDs are tied together at ground, and you turn them on independently by applying a high voltage, uh, or a 1, to the anodes, um, or the other configuration, which is common anode, where the anodes are tied to a high voltage, and you can turn on the LEDs independently by applying a low voltage or zero to the uh, cathodes. A seven-segment display is just a set of LEDs arranged in the shape of a number eight. For example, we could display the number 3 by lighting up the proper segments by asserting zeros on the common anode version or by asserting ones on the right segments of the common cathode version. The segments of a 7-segment display are typically labeled A through G, with A through F going clockwise around the display and G in the middle. So if we wanted to display a 3 on a common cathode version of a 7-segment display, we'd assert 1s on segments A, B, C, D, and G. A particularly useful digital component is what's called a 7-segment display decoder that takes as input a binary number and as output produces the values for signals to a seven segment display to display that number. For example, if we wanted to display the binary number zero, uh, the decoder produces as output lighting up all of the segments except for G, which is the one in the middle. If we wanted to display zero, 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 one, or binary number one, it would just assert the values for segments B and C. A three, um, would light up all of the segments except for E and F, and a 7 would light up segments A, B, and C. Um, note that the decoder can also display um, hexadecimal values for numbers that are greater than 9. For example, 10, which would be uh, 1010, shows up as an A, 11 would be B, and then uh, 15 is hex value F. Inside of the seven segment display decoder is the combinational logic that says which segments to light up for any given combination of inputs. We'll look at the design of a simplified version of a decoder that only has three bits of input such that it can display the uh, decimal numbers zero through seven. We'll also assume that we have a common cathode seven segment display, so we'll assert ones in order to light up a given segment. So we'll start with the truth table that has the um, different combination of inputs for the decimal digits 0 through 7. We begin filling in the truth table by looking at what it first takes to display the decimal number 0. Uh, so we'll enter 1s for each of the segments that need to be lit up for this, which we can see are all of the segments except for the one in the middle, which is G. We can continue that for each of the decimal digits. For example, to uh, display decimal 1, that would involve just lighting up segments B and C. To display a 2, that would mean lighting up all of the segments except for F and C, which are entered as zeros into the table, and so on until we complete the whole table. 
now what we want to do is find the equations um, associated with lighting up each of the segments. We'll start with what it takes to light up segment A, and so we go down the column and we find where all the ones are. So we first have an entry um, in the table uh, that segment A is lit up for the row corresponding to uh, decimal digit zero. Um, so this is the product term or min term, I2 bar, I1 bar, I0 bar. We go down the column and find the next product term associated with uh, decimal two, meaning that the number two also uses segment A. And this is the product term I2 bar, I1, I0 bar. And then we go down the rest of the column and find the product terms associated with wall, where all of the ones are. We can do the same thing uh, for um, segment B, going down the column, finding where are the ones are, and putting in a product term for that. And then we finish the rest of the table, which um, gives us the equations for each of the segments. And now we have all of the information that we need to complete the circuit design. We'll design the circuit using a layout that resembles the truth table, which is a common way of laying out a circuit that has a sum of products for each of multiple outputs. We'll begin with signals for each of the three inputs, as well as provide inverters so that we can get their complements. Next, we'll add AND gates for each of the uh, eight in min terms. So for example, uh, our first min term is for the one that gets uh, the three inputs 0, 0, 0. So note if the three inputs are 0, 0, 0, um, the output of that NAND gate, of that AND gate is activated. Um, otherwise, if we change the value of one of the inputs, it's not. The AND gate for the second min term has inputs I2 bar, I1 bar, I0, such that it is uniquely activated um, when we have the combination of inputs 0, 0, 1. We add the AND gates for the remaining min terms in the same fashion, such that, for example, input combination 0, 0, 0 activates AND gate 0. Input combination 0, 0, 1 activates AND gate 1. Um, 0, 1, 1 activates AND gate 3, and 111 activates AND gate 7. Now we'll add the OR gates to complete the sum of products for each of the uh, segment outputs. We'll start with the output for segment A. Recall that segment A was used for all of the digits except for um, 1 and 4, so the OR gate has the six inputs corresponding um, to the six min terms that are involved. Um, so that OR gate is activated, for example, when the uh, inputs are 0, 0, 0, since we want to display um, digit 0. But if we change the input to 0, 0, 1, um, the output for segment A is deactivated since it's not involved in displaying a 1. Similarly, we add the OR gate for the sum of products for displaying segment B. Recall that segment B is used in displaying every digit except for 5 and 6. So for example, if we put in a, a 5 as the input, 1, 0, 1, then segment B is deactivated. Now we can add the uh, OR gates for the sum of products for the remaining outputs and connect those outputs to the inputs of the seven segment display. And now we see that we'll be able to light up the right segments to display the numbers. For example, 0, 0, 0 displays a 0. 0, 0, 1 displays a 1. 0, 1, 1 displays a 3. And 1, 1, 1 displays a 7.